Well folks, coming at you with another dark, mysterious and conspiracy. You see, today we are talking about Neuralink. Neuralink is more than just a conspiracy. Yeah, surely you're gonna hear some conspiratorial points in this video, absolutely, but it is now a fact. You see, Neuralink has succeeded. That's a good thing, but also can be bad. What happens if the government tells you you must absolutely have this Neuralink chip? What happens then? You remember the, the vaccine passports? What happens then? Yeah, you're gonna say no, absolutely, complete BS, that's never gonna happen. Never gonna happen till how long? Five years, 10 years, 100 years? Like this video, share this video, subscribe if you're brand new and roll it. Neuralink's recent showcase of their brain chip has made this new age of technology seem that much more real. In the oddly low quality live stream, a man who is paralyzed from the neck down is able to control a computer caster purely with his mind. Musk Absolutely likens it to telepathy, but is it really the superpower he says it is? Or is it a marketing term to hide the true implications of what this technology could mean? If you've seen Black Mirror or even really thought about brain chips, you'll know there's some dark possibilities associated with the idea. But as we've seen recently, Neuralink and other brain chip companies have been quick to focus on the medical potential. It's obviously true that there's some amazing things this can do. Neuralink's latest live stream is proof of that. You can see the effect this technology is having in restoring the faculties and freedom that we take for granted, but that some people have lost. Yeah. Playing chess, and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouth stick and stuff, but now it's all, uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's, that's all me, y'all. This is amazing, right? And now we're only talking about the good stuff, but wait for it. That's all I gotta say. That's the only thing that I will tease you with. This is the good stuff. And we're gonna talk about the good stuff right now, but what about the bad stuff? Because the bad stuff, the, the negatives, I feel like kind of outweighs. But this sort of technology, I, I, I'm not one of those guys that's, that's going to say like, yo, stop the technology. No, absolutely not. Because this technology is going to be really, really beneficial for those people that, let's just say, are blind, deaf, or, uh, you know, uh, I have a family member with MS. So this can actually help them, with, uh, help them out with this. Maybe you also have family members with some kind of weird disease that's like untreatable. First of all, I hope and wish nothing but the best to you and to your family member. But, but it's like, I, and I hope this is the solution because it's going to make so many people lives very, very good and easy. Uh, and if it has an affordable price, then absolutely right. But do you want to be the first to do something like this? Uh, let's uh, keep watching. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Actually, can you pause the song just for the yeah, audio absolutely. coming through? Yeah, how does this mouse. even work? It sounds like something straight out of 1984. And medical things aside, how does a brain chip in your brain allow you to restore your mental faculties? Well, right now, these chips, which are around the size of a quarter, can only read information and transmit it to an outside source. After being surgically attached to the brain, the chip sensors detect neuron activity and translate it Man. into a digital signal. This can then be sent to external devices, which is what's been happening in the live stream. We see Nolan, the man in the video, playing chess by using the experimental chip. As he imagines where the cursor should go next, it responds to his thoughts and moves across the screen. It's excellent progress considering the first human trials only started at the turn of the year, just a Holy. few months before the live stream. You can imagine the possibilities beyond this though, like controlling other devices like wheelchairs or anything else really, to walking- You imagine like this is uh, the, the the way we get to uh, communicate with the aliens, the aliens, right? Because we assume that they do clown on clown communication. What I mean is that telepathic communication, that's what everybody says. Says, right because when we get down to the facts so like hey they're probably not gonna be able to speak english right then we are like well they do telepathic communication maybe this is gonna help us with that and before we get to the next part guys if you're brand new this is the content we do mel's whole ufo content conspiracies uh, and the mysterious mysterious dark paranormal videos this is the channel for it if you're new i'd like to i'd like to invite you to subscribe welcome on in again with prosthetics or even repairing the connection to people's own limbs in fact this is something Thing we've already started to see from Swiss researchers that Musk is fun. Paralyzed man walks using device that reconnects brain with muscles. It's gonna be really, really good for uh, these people, but 
<laughs> Wait for it, I guess. It. In the middle of May of 2023, a neural chip implanted into a paralyzed man enabled him to walk again for the first time. One chip in his brain records the signals sent by motor neurons in his brain. This then links to a similar chip in his spine, which sends electrical signals to the nerves in his legs. Over a long period of training, Oscam, who was paralyzed for over a decade, can suddenly walk again. The results man. are absolutely miraculous and incredibly promising for the future. For more than a decade, Gert Jan Oskam has been trying to relearn to walk. A motorbike accident in his late 20s left him paralyzed from the hips down, changing his life forever. But now, Oskam is back on his feet, thanks to groundbreaking digital implants in his brain and his spine. After two days, within five to ten minutes, I could control my uh, hips. Although obviously Holy it's still hard. Holy crap. Holy crap. So after he got Neuralink five, ten minutes later, he now can control uh, and he's no longer paralyzed. I mean, I love to hear that. But what if like in the future, the, the crypto miners and the hackers hack your Neuralink and they use your brain to like mine crypto? <laughs> I know that's crazy thought. What if they play ads in, in your brain, man? That's highly experimental and there's a few caveats. Can't be used constantly only for a few hours a week, but it's still worlds away from nothing at all. And in this sense, Neuralink is amazing. Technology like this in the right hands and treated with great care can change the lives of millions of people but, for the better. But this but, is just a tiny part of Neuralink. You see, even Elon Musk has admitted that this isn't the primary purpose of Neuralink. Even in a benign scenario, we're kind of left behind. You know, we're, 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 not, we're not along for the ride. Um, we're just too dumb. Right. So, so, so how do you go along for the ride? Yeah, it's like you can't beat him, join him. The real purpose, Dang. the true core fundamental reason, is for humanity's battle against AI. But of yeah. course, this isn't a very marketable idea. Telling people that they need to be plugged in to Elon Musk's brain chip to fight off AI just seems so... And, and you know what? Like, obviously, this is... I'm going to dive into the conspiratorial point right now, but is not even... Like, this is logical stuff, right? I wouldn't even class this as conspiracy, but right now it's like conspiracy. Have, have you ever heard today's conspiracies are tomorrow's truth? that's the that's where i'm leaning with what i have to say next because yeah it sounds very very good on paper that you're gonna get Neuralink. but what happens if you have a thought in your brain you haven't committed anything right but you are just thinking about it you're not even thinking about it because thoughts they come in naturally sometimes right you see you have Neuralink. okay i know you don't you were like Skittle, i don't have it fair but hear me out you have Neuralink, right and a thought enters your mind w what if it sends and reads your thought, sends the signal back to the company and they are able to monitor your brain activity and what you're thinking and what if they don't like it? What happens then? Uh, I feel like that in some ways, like when the entire society, if this succeeds, the entire society got it right, I think it's gonna be in, in a way good to stop crimes, but it's like, dog, People have crazy thoughts. It doesn't mean that they're going to act on those thoughts, right? What if this becomes one of those things where, like, you have a crazy thought, boom, you're gone, you're gone. You've seen the, the, the Captain America movie, right? I'm, I'm not sure if it was, like, the first movie or the second movie, but towards the end, it's, like, Hydra, right? Hydra situation. And they used to uh, advance uh, AI, right, to target people that they think in the future are going to turn out to be bad against them. So they're like, okay, before they turn bad, let's kill them all right now. It's one of those concepts. But so wait ridiculous. For it. And so right now, Neuralink and similar companies are focusing solely on medical research because this will be the only acceptable way they can make this technology mainstream in the first place. Because as the technology gets better, it will see far more use to treat patients with nerve damage and other medical issues. But at some point, it'll pass the barrier from being a medical tool into a genuine consumer product, just like an iPhone. And you can be absolutely sure that that's what Elon Musk and others like him have in mind. They yep, openly yep. admit it. And we're, we're already... We're already a cyborg to some degree, right? Yeah. You've got your phone, you've got your laptop. Glasses. Your, yeah, yeah, you your, yeah. you know, sure. electronic devices. Yeah. You might expect it to not offer much to able-bodied individuals. Our hands and our senses are easily able to do all the things that we can imagine that these neural chips will help with. Right now, there seemingly isn't much point or any need to beam a news article or a TikTok video straight into your brain, especially if reading it is far easier and far more natural, let alone way less dystopian. In the same way, it seems like a hassle to get chipped and play computer chess with your mind when a mouse and keyboard can do the same job. Having a hole drilled into your head and a brain chip implanted there doesn't seem like the 
funnest idea, let alone by a private company looking to make a profit. And God knows how they'll try and monetize this. Adverts directly beamed into your brain. Your innermost yeah. thoughts. <laughs> yeah, imagine like they play ads when you're sleeping to like, uh, and subconsciously plant the idea of, hey, you need to buy this, you need to buy this. And this thing is going to be so advanced. If they ever decide to go this route and monetize the hell out of it and hell out of you if you have uh, this uh, brain chip they're first of all gonna know all the data all social media is ever doing is gather data the data is the most important thing ever because they know your behavior they know your wants your needs they know everything about you they know you more than you ever would know yourself about yourself right so they know it and they know what you like what you don't like uh what you don't like but you still fall for it what you don't like but you still kind of itch for it you know what makes you angry what makes you happy and what makes you angry but you always fall back to it to get even more angry you know Bruh. doesn't make sense when you talk about it but it happens every single day to people people it's for stuff that they don't like they dislike it but they still talk about it right drama they, they know everything about, about you and it's like when they know everything about you they're gonna be able to accurately show you the ad in your brain let's just say right you're sleeping but subconscious your subconscious never sleeps so it's like you see the ad when you're sleeping and when you wake up you think it was a dream it was from god it was meant to be i need to go out there and buy that thing and guess what you're a customer now guess what your hundred dollars you have hundred dollar less in your bank account and they monetize you up or they use you as uh or they view you as dollar signs, but at this point, they use you for dollars, I guess. Sent off and monitored by foreign governments. And this is why tech billionaires and investors are going all in on this technology. Because once properly developed, it'll tear down the last barrier between the brain and the digital world. So let's go into this further through the lens of communication. Before telecommunications and all the innovations of the past few hundred years, you only really had two options for conveying complex information. Yep, Either yep. you could say something to someone if they were close enough, or you could write them a letter. It could take weeks or even months for information to travel long distances. As time went on though, we slowly figured out faster and better methods, and that delay got cut down to almost nothing. Fast forward to today, and the internet means we can know about things happening across the world within literal seconds of them happening. In fact, the travel of information is so seamless and instant that we're assaulted with it at nearly every waking moment. So many of our experiences and the information we gain. Yep, 20 years ago, it was like you needed to glue to the actual TV and news channels. Now it's like within minutes you get to know what's the trending news on Twitter, X, uh, Facebook and uh, Google Trends News, whatever, right? ...about the world, it's no longer from the actual world around us. Instead it comes from this new digital dimension that we've been submerged in. It still isn't a perfect connection though, as Mark Zuckerberg has lamented in his appearance on Joe Rogan. I mean, it's it's great to be able to make phone calls and video calls and all that. I mean, if you can't be with someone today, you know, it's nice to be able to see their face, but... When you're on a video call, you don't actually feel like you're there with the person. Some people might say it's good to keep at least one foot in reality, but that's not the future being pushed by the people with real control over the world. They want a seamless connection so they yeah. can have more influence over people's lives and therefore make way more money. And you want to hear the craziest thought and this will open up your third eye and make you think Mark Zuckerberg and all of these big CEOs, guess what? They don't like it. Scratch that part. They don't want their kids being on their on social media oh, shit. Oh, shit. why is that they know something that we don't right that that should be the only thing that makes you think uh to be honest but everybody's like uh, addicted to that crap the further we go into the digital realm, the more reliant we are on their products and inventions. Zuckerberg wants to make the illusion stronger and suck people in further through the use of virtual reality in the metaverse. The more immersive the experience, the more effective it is as a product. But Neuralink threatens one. to go one step further. Once they've solved the problem of giving information to the brain rather than just receiving it, that's the last hurdle to jump over. We'll be able to express our thoughts to other people and get theirs back within milliseconds. You would be able to communicate very quickly and with far more precision. Online content will get sent straight to your brain and it will become Man. like a sixth sense, enabling people to open up their minds and fully connect them to the digital world. This connection with the digital world isn't necessarily a good thing. If you thought people weren't really paying attention to the world around them before, this will be yet another step in that direction. At least yeah. today, there's still the barrier of taking your phone out of your pocket and everyone knows you're not listening. With the neural implants of the future, it would be pretty much impossible for internet addicts to resist being online 24-7. Apart from making people annoying to talk to though, this 
this interconnection would only make the worst kinds of internet groupthink more common. It would mean people are truly replacing their own thoughts with information given to them by the internet. Our brains naturally take the easy route whenever there's an option. It's an evolutionary adaption designed to save calories and prevent us needlessly wasting energy. But just as it backfired in our modern world of junk food and cheap entertainment, it will backfire again with neural implants. Easy access to junk food takes away the work you once needed to get that many calories, and it ends up eventually making the majority of people overweight and unhealthy. Around yep. 50 years after the rise of fast food in the 70s and the population Guess is what? far weaker, more Guess cancerous, what? less capable physically than they once were. And by yeah. doing the same to complex thought and cognitive skills, by giving- you, you think that people cannot have rational thoughts and people cannot reason with other people? Wait for this one, <laughs> you know, go back, uh, let's go 10, 20, uh, 50 years in the future, then you, you think uh, people, because nowadays, if you disagree with somebody, that's like a death offense on the internet. People have forgot <laughs> about that. It's not normal right now to n disagree with someone, right? People, people cannot have the people cannot think for themselves right now. So you add this in the mix, then you don't even have to think anymore. Given people chips that do it for them, we risk the exact same problems. A world of people made dumber because machines do the thinking for them. Even if brain chips do make us smarter overall though, it won't even be close to an equal spread. This technology isn't going to turn people into supercomputers overnight, but it does have real potential to destabilize the playing field. You can imagine delegating parts of your thoughts to AI using these chips. You could use the chip to instantly work out how to split the check at a restaurant or recall specific details that you can't quite remember. Later down the line, you can imagine people storing their memories and things they want to remember digitally, then calling back to them later on using the implant. The International Monetary Fund has warned that 40% of all jobs around the world will be impacted by AI. Yeah. It says the effect is even more pronounced in the developed world, where 60% of roles will be affected. Yeah. According to yeah, if you live in first world countries, no disrespect to people that are in countries that are considered third world, for example, I'm, in, I'm from Pakistan, considered third world country, let's be real, it's a young nation, it's a young country, country right america it's like if we dwell up let's just be real so this thing is gonna start here right i'm currently in canada so this thing is really gonna start in the west and a lot of people are gonna lose jobs this is why you know i would always preach multiple streams of income a lot of people are already losing jobs and you know yeah i'm just a dumb guy on the internet right here's the thing though there are actual ai channels oh, shit. this is not even the crazy part because you already know right like a lot of uh, the videos uh, are now being made with the help of ais most of the time not most of the time just now but future probably this would be a lot more relevant for me to say most of the time but but like for now there are channels which have videos and the entire audio is ai right the entire commentary is ai but still there's a little bit of work put into it right because somebody has to uh script or scratch that part you can just type a bunch of bullet points in chat gpt will give you the script you copy that script paste in an audio ai audio text to speech and boom you got your entire commentary for your video right so still some work required by a human behind the scenes but overall it's ai generated right so what i'm getting to is that even this youtube thing even this online medium online content that i love to create some of you probably create as well that you love to create and watch uh, vice versa here uh, right this is also gonna get replaced uh, with the uh, ai now granted it's uh, gonna take some time but how long we're we talking five years ten years twenty years i mean Nobody knows, right? So this is uh, where we're headed. A lot of people are going to lose jobs, though. Into the IMF, half of us will benefit from higher productivity, but the other half, uh, the rise of AI could see lower salaries, uh, reduced hiring, and even some jobs disappearing altogether. Yeah. You can do a lot of this with your smartphone already, but as the technology progresses, it will give people who can afford it a leg up on everybody else, making the IQ be slightly higher at all times than the rest of the population, giving them a huge advantage in almost yeah. every field you can think of, further isolating the elites from the rest. Because obviously, all the benefits of this technology won't go to the many, it will go to a very select few Silicon Valley titans who can afford it, allowing them to become symbiotic with AI, or whilst the rest of humanity suffers the consequences of the AI revolution. Even when it does eventually become accessible to the general population, the Simply put, rich get richer, the poor stay poor.
Those at the top will have been ahead for years. For the entirety of human history, the difference between the rich and the poor has been limited to external factors. Yep, exactly. Things like a better diet, education, and an easier, healthy lifestyle make a difference. But we're all still human. Given the most powerful people of all, faster and more effective brains changes this dynamic forever. It will make climbing up the ladder almost impossible because all the people above you are just inconceivably smarter using a brain chip in their mind, allowing them to have access to tools you could only imagine. A lot of this still sounds okay when it's in the hands of responsible people working towards the good of humanity. But what, but what about when that doesn't happen? Well, it's yeah. a sad fact that the world is sliding towards autocracy and dictatorship. As of 2022, over 70% of the world lives under some kind of dictatorship a statistic yeah. that's still growing today we're seeing yeah. this people people don't want to believe this but like you're just one leader away one were one leader away from like the bad stuff happening in your country around you right just one leader away a good leader uh, the leader has all the power right i it's gonna sound insane when you verbally say it but just think about it right like it just takes one leader for example uh like you're looking at two leaders right now right if they were to decide they they, they do decide but if they were to decide your future my future and let's just say tomorrow they're like you know what i'm feeling a little cute let's delete a country boom you need that it's over y you know what i mean i know this is a I'm, I'm using an exaggerated example i'm going to the extreme i'm well aware of that but just think about it right you're just were i should say you and i were both one leader one bad leader away from the bad stuff happening and that goes for everything like dictatorship like you said controlling you know the the china chinese uh What's the word? What's the word? There's like social credit. Yeah, it's social credit system. And when you got that brain chip inside you, right? Like it's gonna know all your thoughts as well rampantly across the world, and even authoritarianism within the US itself. And as we've been warned by books like 1984, which we did a oh, huge dang. video on, which you can check out here, I explain Yo. that we're now seeing 1984 in our own world. Dictatorships are happy to exploit the tools of control that technologies give them. Just look at China or Russia's mass internet censorship, or their facial recognition cameras aimed at every street corner. As our yeah. lives get more and more intertwined with technology, the degree to which they can be controlled by outside forces only goes up. So what happens when we put technology straight into our brains? Well, there's a lot of disturbing possibilities. For centuries, authoritarian governments have dreamed of the ability to control the thoughts of their citizens. They could do it indirectly through propaganda, social pressure, and fear, but Neuralink and other technologies like it could make this a reality. Sure, we can only really read motor functions and basic commands that go up right now, but that's all but, gonna change very soon. To yeah, act just simply put, right, like, uh, you remember a year ago when we saw that AI video of Will Smith uh, eating the noodles? That was a year ago. You've probably seen the Sora AI and what it's capable of doing now just a year after it's so good that you know what it's still not perfect but but like it's so good to the point where you cannot even tell uh if you're just watching it without really paying attention you're like okay this is real it looks beautiful but then if somebody were to tell you only then you're gonna find out that yeah what you're looking at is not real uh, a year from now five years 10 years from now holy crap because it's gradual it has that factor of compounding it has a compounding effect the better it get the better it gets and the better it gets the faster it get better it gets better right uh, and obviously we're just looking at version one it's gonna gather data from everyone that's gonna be getting uh, and it's gonna factor in like their thoughts and it's gonna see they're gonna come out with a version two version three version four and I believe that the way they are actually doing this thing is like they're gonna do a little surgery right I'm only assuming I'm not sure so this is just my assumption if they're not doing it this way then i mean why are you even doing it i'm assuming that they would just connect some wires inside your brain and have like a plug coming out and with that plug like a, let's just say a usb it's probably not a plug that's compatible with this right let's just say to make it easy you have a dongle coming out usb uh and with that you can connect it you can disconnect it you can connect it you, so basically in the future whenever they have version 2 you can just connect it and you don't have to go and rip it out of your head and place another one right you, you understand what i'm saying because if you constantly have to do the <laughs> surgeries after surgeries uh, to replace with a new version then it's like bleh. you know what i'm saying so i think uh, that's the route they're going so they're not gonna stop there it's gonna get better better gonna have more computing power 
Actually read our thoughts on a much deeper level, these chips and the computers they connect to need to be able to interpret what specific neurons firing in specific patterns actually mean. Even though we have around 100 billion neurons, this isn't as hard as it seems. Our current AI models, while limited in a bunch of ways, excel at sorting through and noticing patterns in massive databases. In fact, we already have AI models that can translate silent thoughts into words on a screen. Subjects wearing a special cap which monitors brain signals can see their thoughts expressed in front of them with up to 60% accuracy. They would read the sentence slightly and the AI could tell what the sentence was without any other inputs. Never mind reading people's texts and what yeah. they share with their phones, this technology could expand to actual mind reading in a few years rather than decades. These neuroscientists at the University of Texas in Austin say they've made a major breakthrough. They've figured out how to translate brain activity into words using artificial intelligence. And you can't expect dictators not to salivate over the idea of just this. It could give rise to the literal thought police, following up on tips given to them by the helpful AI watchdog reading people's brainwaves. Yeah, if that's not a cyberpunk well, yeah, dystopia, yeah. I don't even know what is. Imagine Yeah, this is exactly what we were talking about earlier, right? Like, if it reads your thought and you have, like, a bad thought of, uh, like, doing some crime, it's gonna read, it's gonna send the signal back, and boom, <laughs> now you're done. What if you were never, what if it just was a thought, you were never, because so many people have wild thoughts, it doesn't mean that you're gonna act upon it, right? You have so many, uh, there are thousands of thoughts that happen inside your brain, it doesn't mean that you're gonna do any of that, right? But, but it's, uh, one of those dystopian world, the cyberpunk dystopia, that, uh, yeah world, where just thinking the wrong thing could get you jailed for hate speech. These are all problems for the future, but what about right now? We're already seeing some of the potential issues that these implants can create, even just as medical treatments. Retinal implants are similar to neural implants, but instead they act as a replacement for damaged optic nerves. It's an amazing technology which can give rudimentary sight to people that thought they had lost it forever. But some people who've had these implants had their sight cruelly taken away again. In one case, a woman received an optic implant to fix a genetic condition which made her blind. But four years later, it suddenly stopped working and shut down, plunging her back into darkness. The company who made the implant had completely stopped support. And, and I forgot, I wanted to bring this point up a lot earlier. Yeah, it, Neuralink just succeeded on one person, but but it only succeeded today. What what about like future, right? What Like what happens a week from now, two weeks, 10 years from now, right? It's like one of those things. It's like you don't know the outcome of it supporting it and weren't willing to help at all. Another company has recently taken up the technology again, so in this specific case all hope wasn't completely lost. It won't be that way though all the time, and lingering questions about the difficulty of upgrades and the lifespans of implants still plague the industry today. And these are just some of the many, many problems that neural implants and this technology could bring to the world. But I don't want to go full on conspiracy mode, considering this technology has <laughs> only just been tested out on humans. But we have- I mean, we kind of did actually, but guys, this is the last conspiracy episode that we've done. Click on this video, check it out. Usually we just do UFO and paranormal content, but we're adding conspiracies as well. If this is what you like, it's a pleasure to have you. Definitely subscribe and check out this last conspiracy video. On the left, I got you with a UFO video as well. If you enjoyed that, check it out and I'll see you there.